Hello, hello. Welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy XIV. So, here we go. We're gonna go into this dungeon on Dragoon, just because I want that for the job layout of my trusts. And uh, I went and got this uh, Runefinter's, Valerian Runefinter's wings. Um, you can't dye them, so. Uh, there's one other wing option in one of the Stormblood dungeons. It's like Farlander's wings or something like that. Which I don't know if I could die, but uh, <sighs> I don't know. I don't even know if I'm going to keep these on for the cutscenes. I just want Clyde to have, you know, wings on his head, I guess. And, uh, yep, so they're both flexing, and when you choose to be DPS, Emmett Selt flexes to tank, otherwise he's a black mage. And Vina flexes to healer. Um, if you tank, Vina is still healer. But if you heal, Vina will flex to tank. And uh, you don't. There's there's no way, as far as I know, to see her on her DPS roll. But um... come, let us be off. <sighs> Let's get this over with. I can scarcely contain my excitement. The. Um... People have looked into the data and then also extrapolated from the, the quest earlier where you sparred with her that her DPS would be Dancer. And Hithlodeus, uh, you can see he's a bard. They call, they call him a Soul Seer. And, uh, let's, let's get into this dungeon then. Catesis Hyperborea. Desert stitched into a to a tundra. Oh, stitched into volcanoes. Wow. Okay. So they've got like what four different biomes all just stitched together right there. I wonder if that's how this place is supposed to be. See some food. Check this text from my girlfriend. Please turn back. Else I might be forced. <laughs> Emmett Selk's tank class is the Dark Knight. I'm just gonna tether him because why not? Yeah, as for why I wanted this these job combos, it's just specifically because I find the idea of Vana healing in itself uh, funny. I also find Vana as the healer somewhat appropriate because healers can be quite problematic when they believe that they they actually believe the stipulation that they hold the means of the life and death of everyone in the party in their hands. And, you know, that they're the most important person in the party and whatnot. Which is true in, like, savage content, sort of. But, like, you know, there's, like, some dark truths to this game where uh, healers barely matter in, like, dungeon content and or if you bring, like, all tanks and stuff like that, so... Uh, it might sound kind of silly, but you also notice that they're making use of abilities that we as players lost at some point. Like, Bana has put stone skin on the entire party, and that's something players used to be able to do, and now can no longer do. True 
found him. I'm not entirely useless. <laughs> he says he shoots a giant laser beam into the enemy. Some of these creatures, you know, are very reminiscent of stuff we've seen in the modern day, and I guess what you're supposed to extrapolate. And if we'd done the side quest, you would, you would already have extrapolated this. That all of these creatures that the ancients created uh, lived into the modern era. They were approved as concepts, and then got to live in the world and, and become real animals. rather than just, you know, experiments. But it's also kind of funny to me that, like, I don't know, people judge the ancients like they're some sort of horrible monsters because they experiment on animals that they themselves make with their own life energies. And then, like, but in like real life, you know, we, we, we test on animals that, you know, we have no way of, you know, making or healing from the unexpected side effects, like the drugs and things we test on them. You know, whereas like, if the ancients create something that's suffering, they can at least put it out of its misery uh, and perhaps remake it and give it a better life the next go around. And of course, you know, there's that whole distinction between arcane. Have a taste. Oh yeah, I'll have a taste, lady. Uh, but uh. How about you? Man, she's getting all vocal. She just want to fall. Talk here. But you know, they they said that you know, like their creations don't have souls, and unless the planet gives them one. Uh. You know, the, uh, they're considered arcane entities, right? So, like, a lot of the stuff they create, you know, it's literally just like a meat puppet. It's not even, like, like it verifiably does not have a soul. So, like, they're not, they're not really killing anything that's alive. Here you go, Heath. Or Heath. I'll say your name right one of these days. Frost, fight, and seek, huh? Okay, so he does, like... Foot footsteps or whatever, and then you know you can you can read where the footsteps are. And we just got to see that the ancients were capable of the Ascian teleport uh, even before Zodiac. So that's not Zodiac power. Again, prop by the sea. So, we just look for where the foot footpath ends, and I guess it's over here. Yeah. Ah, but nah, you're slow. You're slow on the uptake. Yeah. 
Although I can admit, the first time I was in here, I actually didn't know how to read the footprints. Um, and so I just literally followed the Na to the taste spot. Have a taste! That was back in December. Okay, baby, I'll have a taste. You have a taste of meat. Frostbite and Sika. Okay, so we got this loop around and the footprints they end here, so. Peace in the ethereal sea. But why would it go to the? Did it have a soul? Did we just kill something with a soul? Like that's the only way it's going to the ethereal sea, right? You know, I haven't checked potencies in a long time. And they altered potency significantly in, in Walker for every job, so I don't even know if I'm supposed to be AoEing at three targets. I'm pretty sure that that was always the standard. I see you, okay. And the reason they altered it was because they, in Shadowbringers, they actually mistakenly made a lot of the AoEs so strong that you use them on two targets. Made dungeons even more boring than they already were uh, in regards to like what you do rotationally on the quote unquote trash monsters. I warned you. Stay away. But Hermes Sama, what if I don't want to stay? Out of my way. I feel like they didn't give the voice actor the context for that that line. Like he sounds all light and airy, like it's no big deal. That uh, Emma Self line that just went off. I also find it funny that the treasure boxes in here just look like basic bitch boxes. Also, have I been missing... Like, I, I just see that, you see that glowing stuff? Have, have I missed one of those? Let's uh, look back for a second. See, they tell you about the creations. Stuff.
I'm not entirely useless. Let's read this one and then see if I missed one. Go back real quick. Observation journal. According to Mistress Lisa, Lisa or Lisa, I'm gonna go with Lisa because there's two S's. Uh, her creation is based on a concept for a bipedal wolf, and indeed it is impressively man-like in its gait. It is also highly intelligent, as is evidenced by its ability to employ tools. While the gleam in its eyes gives the impression that it comprehends our words, comprehends our words. If this proves to be the case, it would be a shame that its throat isn't designed for speech. I must make mention of this in the next report. Like, did I miss anything? Because I don't want to be missing observations. I don't want to be missing missing content here. Okay, I think that's the first one. There might have been one closer to the start, though. We can always come back through at the end, I think. Although, that might <laughs> disrupt the flow of the story. Yeah, they showed this place, like this room in the trailers for Inwalker, and uh, the speculation for months was that this was like what was in the basement underneath Charlie in. And uh, no one in the right mind thought we were going back in time. He may have his flaws, but you can't fault his managerial prowess. Seriously, you want to discuss his candidacy now? Hythlodeus <laughs> uh, is, is like the perfect embodiment of a, of a modern day troll. <laughs> I'm not entirely useless. I think somebody with a parser actually parsed when you run the dungeon with with crust with him itself as a black mage, and because of how trusts are forced to play the game, despite the fact that him itself is a black mage and it's far more powerful than Bard, um, Hythlodeus actually out, out, out damages him, which is funny. Um, probably unintentional, but that that was what they did. That's, that's, they, they didn't think about you know how much trusts DPS can really suck when they react perfectly to dodging everything and, um, you know, don't actually have any, like, substats or anything. There truly is no accounting for taste, huh? Four! Oh yeah, and in case you missed it or weren't paying attention, the reason we're in a party like this and we seem to be as strong as Vena and Metzelk and Hithlodeus is because the facility is lowering the... Uh, it has an enfeeblement in place that lowers all non-staff members uh, Out of my way. How about their, their power. You would think it would affect the creations themselves, other than us, but uh, Hermes has probably adjusted it or something. So we gotta like... Breathe sideways? Yeah, okay. Out of my way! This boss always sort of throws me for a loop. Three heads is mildly confusing. I see you opening. This may stick. This may stick. I still love this freaking music, though. How about you? 
I'm not sure what Hytho Deus is limit break AI is if he'll limit break eventually or if he's not gonna limit break because on DPS. I'm pretty sure that when you come in as tank or healer that in itself takes the limit break most more often than not and we'll use it immediately upon it filling. I see you opening. I'll probably just use it in a second here after I rebuff my attack bonus and dot. Okay, so it's gonna move forward and sideways. Oh, this is the uh, Ascian set that you could get back in Heroes, uh, Heroes Gauntlet or whatever in in Shadowbringers. Makes sense. We're basically in Ascian times. And... I cannot let you take me, Zion. Not yet. I mean, you could just come along with her, dude. I don't get why you're so upset. Maybe he's also trying to avoid punishment. There's probably, you know, he's gonna get punished for uh, you know, more or less uh, making a creation that threatens the whole star and uh, Have a taste. you know Out of my it's not approved way. at all, right? I'm not so. entirely useless. I'm not entirely useless. I see you opening. Oh, hey, more, uh, more stuff to read. I must hear their answers before they're expunged from existence. How would we expunge the whole hive mind, though, even if we deleted just Meteon? Like the, the one Meteor that he has with him right now that's giving the answers that we want to hear. Out of my way! Have a taste! Sure is pretty up here though. 
It reminds me of pictures I've seen of like um, those crazy jumps that people do with like the the first spacesuits and stuff, where like you I see you opening. Use a balloon to levitate a platform to, to like to the stratosphere, and then um, I see you opening. You jump off with you know with a couple of parachutes or whatever it is. And, Whenever you get low enough, you, you, know, you open your parachute taste. and you're fine. This is the way terminal velocity works. And the fact that opened at the right time with enough leeway, a parachute will still slow you down enough to you know, save your life and whatnot. Out of my way! These are the birds that are in the step that are like the pink yoles. These, these, these are storm blood birds that we tame for the Nadam. How about that? Out of my way! Man, they didn't change really at all in 12,000 years, huh? Flying life forms introduction. The successful creation of migratory birds which traveled between continents with the seasons came as a breath of fresh air to the longest stagnant realm of flying life forms. In the end, it was a relatively simple thing to grant creatures the ability to navigate by celestial bodies, but this method lacked the precision needed to guide them to the same location each time, as would be vital to their survival. The breakthrough came in the form of magnetic fields, the use of which was discovered by the incumbent Fan Daniel during his tenure as chief overseer of Elpis, a truly inspired idea that has brought lasting benefits to the star. Huh, Aetheris confirmed to have magnetic poles, just like Earth. That's how birds work in real life. Oh snap, here we go, we're here. Winged Defiance, Hermes. So, it comes to this. I have no wish to fight, but this time, I cannot yield. Though the world may think me a mad, desperate fool, I will hold fast to my conviction. Your conviction to hear bad news. Roger that, insane man. I will have the time and tranquility I require. Now, okay, to where? Lust and pale, gather to me. Fall. Ancient brand, unleash your power! Uh, they just, just like stay out of the way, you know? Yeah. Oh, too hard. Dancing wind! I'm not in time! Here's my throne! I thought Deus, don't speak at the same time as Hermes. You're ruining his voice line. Stars on high! Fall is rain! The, uh, the comets. I'm not entirely useless. I didn't read it right. I see you, Anthony. Ether. Surge is one! 
quadruple. Uh, you remember how uh, when we fought Napper Yallies, he did double and triple? I'm not entirely useless. Okay, so basically... Going to... Move like here, I guess? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm a dumb. That's okay. Be able to hit. I did my move in the wrong order. Kill me, please, for now. Make up for my blunders, please. Thank you. Dancing winds, here's my foes. It's been forever since I've done this dungeon. I did not level all my jobs on my main character. I had pretty much put Inwalker down for like, other than raiding, for like, since like, January. The story bothered me a lot, and there just wasn't anything that I cared to be doing. Yeah, we've been all, we've been in this dungeon for 30 minutes, like, pretty much. Stars on high! Fool is rain! Prepare yourself! Even when transformed, but I am not finished yet. Don't worry, Brokadero, you don't you don't gotta be finished. I'm gonna finish it for you. Or not. I feel like the limit break is a lot weaker these days. Oh. No! <sighs> My power We hit him so hard, we knocked him out of his transformation, and knocked his mask off. Did all say anything cool? Hopefully he has calmed down a little. Mary Chase, he let us on. But not. Let us leave the rest to Emmett's up. Really? You're just gonna get lazy all of a sudden? Why? Oh, we got the minion. Caduceus. Won't spit acid at you, so rest easy. And if we check that out, we, uh, we get to see that one of Hermes' pet creations, this intelligent serpent, served as a message bearer and help us. Perhaps due to his inherited memories, Amon would bestow the selfsame name upon another serpentine creation, which he dispatched to guard Dalamut. First boss in Binding Coil Bahamut. Reference the Dominion. Uh, what? Nine years later? Like Jesus. Alright, prepare for cutscenes. I was prepared to hear me slip soda. It's over, Hermes. In the name of the Convocation, I hereby take Meteon into custody. And setting aside the matter of your nomination, you will come with us too. We require your knowledge to assess and resolve the situation. <clears throat> Meteon, I am so sorry for that I could have listened to your report in full. Reflected upon its meaning and conveyed it to others. That they might reconsider their chosen course. If you even interpret it correctly. But I have failed. And that wish will never be realized. 
However, ere our fates become the province of others, I bid you tell me just one thing. Was there happiness in those distant stars? Was there a reason for living? We conducted our search as per your instructions. We scoured historical records, communed with the spirits of the deceased. Heard the final testaments of the dying. Welcomed their shadowed hearts into our own. One race had striven to create a world bereft of animosity. They renounced relationships to avoid interpersonal strife and in so doing brought about societal collapse. One race had renounced war and devoted itself to the enrichment of its people. They were conquered. Though they destroyed the enemy in reprisal, they could not regain their former glory. One race had concluded that finite time was the root of all woes. Aspiring to shatter its shackles, they went in search of infinity. They discovered nothing is infinite, and that neither time or death can be cheated. Disillusioned, they gave up on the future, and themselves. One race had discarded all things that gave rise to sorrow, hoping to have only joy. They found joy lost its savour in the absence of sorrow, and lost their will to live. The worlds apart, these peoples shared a belief. The belief that they had tried their best. That they had tried to fulfill their potential with every step and success. In the course of which, they learned the truth. Man, she'd be looking like a humanity sprite from... That they would never be free of fear and sorrow, anger and despair, of loneliness, so long as they yet lived. Even now, their souls cry out for oblivion. And to this song of anguish, I lend my voice. We lend our voice. Oh, beloved mankind, shimmering jewels of beautiful Atheris, rejoice, for we will free you from the cruel yoke of existence. There is no need to struggle in vain, for in nihility awaits salvation. You will know peace and serenity, and it will be beautiful. We will make our nest at the edge of the universe, and there in the dark of dead worlds, hoard sorrow and suffering. There we will sing, our chorus ever louder and ever clearer, that our song may reach even this ether-shrouded star. Such is the answer we have found in the stars. Such is the gift we now offer to a fairies. our fate, to decree we live or die. Have 
you lost your mind? You heard what she said. She means to destroy us all, yet you'd still take her side? In the name of the star, we have discarded those creations that we deemed flawed. If we ourselves are flawed, does not stand to reason that we too should be discarded. That is sophistry, and you know it! Perhaps it is. Perhaps I am wrong. But who is to say that you are right? Let us settle this with a determination. In my authority, as Chief Overseer of Elpis, I will make a judgment on man's fitness to exist. If he can learn to value all life and retain his will to live, even should his end be justified, he will surely find a way to avert his demise. If not, he will perish from the star. As with all determinations, provisions must be made to ensure fairness. Kairos! Awaken! I wish I could, like, that the dialogue wasn't advancing automatically so I could respond in Z. Memory reconfiguration system Kairos activated. Awaiting instruction. Command. Universal memory alteration. Target area. Catesis Hyperborea. Starting point. Arrival of Emmett Selk of the Convocation at Propylion. End point. The present. Erase the memories of all events and replace with a vague recollection of the following. I was here. Preparing to demonstrate the functionality of Kairos to Emmet Selk and Hithidaeus. Meteon's shared consciousness became unstable. She and her sisters could not sustain their existence, and all dissipated the burst. The resultant shockwave accidentally triggered Kairos which erased several days of memories from all present. Execute. Command acknowledged. Initializing. Three processes remaining to execution. Bravo. I dare say one would be hard-pressed to make it fairer. Everything that you told us Everything that has happened, the fact we've even met, it will all be gone. Yeah, no surprise there. I was told I couldn't actually change the past, for some reason. Go, Mitsu. To the edge of the universe, where none can reach you. Hermes! Won't you come with me? If you were to shed your flesh, I should be able to carry you. <laughs> uh, I will remain. As a man, I will oppose the oblivion you bring. Silly fool. Had you said yes, I would have granted you the gentlest end. Here, if you break our chains first, fly, Meteor. <sighs> that is far enough, Hermes. Argos to me.
First process complete. Two remaining to execution of memory reconfiguration. As if we needed more pressure. No matter what, you cannot forget what happened today. For it is the key to saving your future. Your world. This fight is our fight. What comes after, our problem to contend with. Not yours. No. Your own struggle awaits. And no one else can take your place. You must flee this place with your memories intact. And I will see that you do. Now then, where is it? There you are, my little confluence. Throw your chakrams at her. Or, or that. Okay, scoot up on your dog at least. Almost! I have Argos bite her ankle. Oh. Yep, definitely should have. Well, Let's hit her with the, the chakrams. You may elude us this day, but not forever. Put a tracker on her. Okay. I suppose even if she did take her out, Meteon's gotten away. The rest of the hive mind would still be Second active. process complete. One remaining to execution. No. No time for brooding. Listen well. Beyond lies a spatial confluence that connects the interior sections of this building. I will destroy the confluence and force open a way outside. When I do, you must jump through. If we're technically still within the pocket dimension of the building. I else. cannot tell you how sorry I am. How is Meteon getting out? But neither. Can I let you escape? Too brave by half. Exemplary work, as always, Emmett Selk. What? But how? I thought the confluence was... over... Over there? Yes. We were rather hoping you would. It was never anywhere but where it is now. The instant those two began making their way towards nothing, T'was clear the plan was a diversion. I'm quite incapable of destroying a confluence, I must confess. A gambit brazen beyond words. Though we've grown accustomed to reckless improvision due to the antics of an incorrigible associate. <laughs> yeah. Though, in the case of certain present company, incorrigible is an understatement. Honestly, I'm beginning to suspect it's a requirement for every Azen. Oh, idle and save us with the dog. Or for now, rather. There's no time! Quickly! Even now, I do not believe your tale. I would not suffer us to walk such a wretched path. Still, if it must be said. Do not squander it. The legacy I leave you. 
Dude, why are you just standing around with your thumb up your ass? Just summon your Grani mount that lets you fly and grab Bethlodeus and get- process complete. Executing universal memory alteration. At least try to get the fuck out of here. Go, Argos! And Vana gets out. Hmm. Why does Vana get to get out? That's not good. That's not good at all. Time for plot holes. Time for the narrative to shoot itself in the foot like 25 times and then trip over a rake, whack itself in the face, and brick its jaw on the curb as it lands. I'm fine. Just a little tired. Mm, but why would you be tired out here? The enfeebling spell is gone now that we're outside. Can it be true? Are we the only ones left who see beauty in the world? In life? You're talking about on a universal perspective, I guess? Are the stars above no more than husks of fallen civilizations? Well, how many Matea did he send out, right? Like, as rare as life could be, I mean, we haven't found any in the real world, obviously, because we don't, we don't have the ability for deep spacefaring. But, um... You know, I, I find it hard to believe if, if, you know, he sent out, like, even 100 Matea, right? And they all found planets with life of some sort? That would still only be 100 planets. Like, did they, did they continue going after that and literally find every single planet in only 108 years? Like, eh. And was she even actually giving us an, ac yet. an accurate portrayal of what she found? Or did the fact that Hermes gave her a flawed premise to work with cause her to fall down the dark path? You know, whenever she found something that was bad, right? And did she, when, when she found, when part of the hive mind started going dark, did it contaminate the rest of the hive mind as they found planets that maybe weren't dark? And maybe cause those planets to fall, you know, by by presenting such darkness to them. I feel her. Though she is unimaginably distant, I feel Meteon's presence. And the place where too we must go. Ere she made good her escape, I placed an enchantment upon her. One which allows us to follow her trail. She has already left the outermost bounds of Atheris and continues on her way. Given the vastness of the universe, it will still be no easy feat to track her down. But thanks to Emmet Selk and his Ladeus, all is not lost. We remember. They'd remember too if they monologued a little bit less and got on Grani and flew out with us like they could have. So long as we remember, our fates remain ours to shape. Or, you know, maybe if we had restrained Hermes instead of fucking standing there and let him, you know, whine to Meteon and pull out his staff again and all that shit. We literally all came down with a sudden case of scriptwriter says stand around with your thumb up your ass and do absolutely nothing. I'd like to know too. Let us ascertain the situation at Cutesis Hyperborea, where they should still be. Given the likely state of their memories, however, it would be imprudent for us to approach them directly. In which case... Mm. 
I am sorry, my friend. I've asked much of you this day. But may I trouble you one last time? Argos will investigate in our stead. We will share in his consciousness and see and hear as if we were with him. Now, close your eyes and open your mind. You are unharmed. Unharmed? There is a gaping hole in my memories. I can scarcely remember arriving here in Elpis. Forgive me. I was preparing to demonstrate the functionality of Kairos to our guests. But Meteon, her shared consciousness became unstable. And she. She. So, that's what prompted the state of alert. And when you went to investigate, you were caught in Kairos's accidental operation. So it would seem. It's all a blur to me. Such an unfortunate accident. Oh, and what of Vena and your other companion? You went inside together, as I recall. We did? If Venar was with us, I have no recollection of it. But that there is her familiar, is it not? The fellow seems happy enough, so I think it's safe to assume his mistress is well. I haven't the slightest notion who this other companion might be, however. Ah, well, that individual struck me as a bit different for want of a better word. Perhaps it wasn't actually a person, but some manner of creation. Curious. I must ask Venar about it when next we meet. Yes, yes, you do that. Now, if we may tend to Hermes, whatever this Meteon did, it seems he bore the brunt of it. Once you are fit to travel, you will return with us to Amarot. We need to make certain there are no other ill effects. Also, I am here on business of the Fourteen. We've already had the conversation, like as not, but since your toy wiped my memory, we'll have to have it again. Yes, of course, as you see fit. This Kairos, it manipulates memories through the emission of etheric waves, correct? There is a theory which holds that memories scoured by blasts of ether are restored when the soul is cleansed in the underworld. If true, then perhaps when our time comes to return to the star, we shall remember these few days we have lost. I doubt aught of interest occurred. Look forward to the revelation if you like but I should prefer to reminisce on more meaningful moments. And that is irony. But I mean... Let us rest, if only for a while. Vana has her memory intact. And remember a couple of cutscenes back or a few cutscenes back when we looked with the echo that she can consciously control as can almost all ancients to see the past and she's told us that there was two ways to do that to use that power you could glean information from the ethereal marks left on the environment but you could also peer into the soul of an individual while they're recalling a memory. She could literally go right now and give Emmett Selk and Hithlodeus their memory 
of what transpired for the last two or three days back. Or at least enough uh, from, from the time that we met her in Elpis back. She could give them part of what was erased back. And they could learn everything using the Echo. Which they all have. After all, you and I... Oh, we still have a long, long way to go. Long way go to go to where? All right, madam. Continue shooting the plot in the back. It's unlikely he will create more intellectes. He poured much of himself into Meteon, and now that she and her sisters are gone, dissipated in his mind, the grief must be unbearable. He will blame himself. He will believe that had he never acknowledged his dissatisfaction with the world, Matea would have never been born to suffer and die. The offer to join the 14 will be a welcome distraction, and one day, hence, he will face the advent of the final days in the role of Fan Daniel. Thou must live, die, and know. Clyde, listen to me. Our duty now is not to denounce Hermes for his misguided determination, or to convince him itself and Hithlodeus that they have been deceived. Now we no, we must instead ensure that the experiences Hermes sought to expunge are preserved. What remains now in our memories alone will be our weapon against the final days. You must fight this battle in your age, and I in mine. Come, let us walk together once more. I will see you to the doors of Propyleon. How did they say it in the cutscene? He said it in the cutscene. I can't even... can't even remember. But yeah, we don't actually need to be denouncing anything. She could go with and use the Echo... Or, or let Emmett Selk and Hithlodeus use the Echo to, to get their memory back. They could get their memory back right now. And she wouldn't have to work alone. For some people, seeing like the flying, the floating Kairos clock, and you know, Meteon suddenly becoming super evil, uh, thanks to her hive mind and whatnot, and, and Dynamis, like that's where they like say, okay, the story's jumped off the shark, and I'm just here to en enjoy the Final Fantasy vibes, and this is how every GRPG ends. But for me, uh, I, even when I played through this the first time, I had issues. I immediately had issues uh, with the, the notion that, you know, that they that their memories, they, they can't get them back. You know, they, they can't see what happened. Because they can. They literally can. They have the power to control the Echo in this age. And, and she could give them their memories back. Your time in this age is drawing to an end. Upon speaking to Vana, several cutscenes will play in sequence. It is recommended that you set aside sufficient time to view these scenes in their entirety. One of these days, they're going to actually record the time it takes to get through the cutscenes and give you the, um, you know, automatic text advance time of cutscenes instead of just saying sufficient time. Either way, we're about to be strapped in for about I don't know, 20 to 30 minutes of cutscene. If that, maybe, maybe, maybe more like 15. So, it is within. The portal that brought you hither, and will take you home. I didn't see no fucking portal.
May you and yours emerge triumphant. Make use of the knowledge you have gained, that your days in Elpis and our friend's sacrifice be not in vain. It wasn't really a sacrifice, it was more like them consciously standing there with their thumbs up their ass. With Meteon free to pursue her designs, it is only a matter of time until the final days are upon us. We must be ready. From fortifying our defenses to securing our escape, there is much to be done. In spite of this, we cannot allow the report that set this calamity in motion to become common knowledge. Were the masses to learn the fates of the other stars, I fear the situation would spiral out of our control. I must carefully consider who can be trusted and bring them into the fold. Ordinarily, I wouldn't hesitate to call upon the Fourteen. However, it was the desire for a fair determination that drove Hermes to attempt to erase our memories. And were he made aware of his actions, there is no telling whether he would remain a friend or become a foe. Alternately, we might try to alienate him from the Convocation. Yet in doing so, we would deprive ourselves of a brilliant mind who would be invaluable in the crises to come. Quite the dilemma. Which is why I must work independently of the Convocation. You really don't have to. They don't even work together all the time. You could see which ones are, you know, trustworthy and start with fucking Emmett Selk because you could give him his memory back and then, you know, you could explain to him your feelings on the matter and to not tell, you know, not tell Hermes until after he's helped make Zodiac. Regardless of how we proceed, if we are to permanently avert the final days, we must be equal to Hermes's challenge. We must prove that mankind is worthy to exist. Honey, there is no way that an individual or even a duo can prove that for an entire race or species. An exceptional individual... Like... This is absolute fucking madness! And this hinges, I think on how we confront the all-consuming despair that accompanies a senseless and seemingly inevitable end. Bewildered and divided, we would perish like the peoples of those celestial ruins. We could not hope to survive the final days, much less take the battle to Meteon at her nest. We must find a way to defeat despair to unite and prepare as many as possible for the struggle ahead. Gee, I hope you have a plan for that or something that doesn't involve, you know, doing what I told you that you would do, that you still remember that you're going to do, you know, when you shatter the souls of every living thing on the planet, including all of the souls that are in, in the live stream, because you shatter the live stream too. Heavy will weigh the burden of guiding this legion of souls. Yet I have faith in mankind's potential. As long as he believes in himself, there is naught he cannot achieve. So I will not give up on him. On us. You may find your world to be very different. Or perhaps the erasure of our friend's memories has sown the seeds of a conjunction between us. We cannot know until the moment is at hand. So shall I strive to do my best, taking naught for granted as I walk my path. And I pray you walk with me to the end. As you move forward, so too will I, as will all, resolved to fight for the morrow. 
And when mankind has found the strength to stand against despair, we shall silence the song of oblivion. She who sings it will learn our journey is far from over. This I promise. Well, don't make a promise if you can't keep it. Fare you well, my light of the future. Till we meet again. Absolutely insane. Pretty hot though, and does anal. And we're falling From into this the day forth, I shall strive to bring honor to the seat of Fandani. Okay, we're going the right way, it seems. Oh, there's the final days. Prepare for metaphors, viewers! Even now... I remember standing there, locked in a moment where the sky is aflame. Where stars fall as tears, and screams darken the seas. Where resignation rots the trees. Where terror twists magics into abominations. Such is the lament of they who have gone before. The song of they who tried and failed to create a better world. The song of the end. That which hides at the edge of the universe is no longer hope's creation. It is hopelessness incarnate. That day, mankind saw half of its number sacrificed to bring forth Zodiac. And covering the star in a shroud of ether, we forestalled the final days. Yet the cries echoed still. We wept for innocence lost, wailed for death inevitable. A reality too terrible to bear. 
And for too many, who sought comfort in gilded memories of joyful days and tranquil nights. This is all wrong. Why must we suffer so? It needn't be like this. No. There must be a way to restore things to the way they were. To reclaim the perfect paradise we once had. No, my friends. Suffering exists. And we cannot pretend otherwise. No civilization, however great, could eliminate it. If we would live, we must accept it as our constant companion. Let us not seek to forget this tragedy. Let us carry it in our hearts, that we may grow stronger and know true happiness. We can't accept it. We won't accept it. It will be ours again. A world free of sorrow! No, it will not. For there has ever been sorrow. Mankind was but spared its biting sting for a time. So please, open your eyes to try and reclaim those lives we lost by sacrificing yet more isn't wisdom, it is weakness. No paradise is without its shadows. If we cannot accept this truth and learn from our pain, then our plight shall be repeated. Mighty Zodiac, God born of our boundless faith, we bid you hear our prayer. Accept this offering of lives and deliver unto us the lives we once had. Deliver unto us the days of old, the days when the star was a font of love, and we knew naught but bliss. You would destroy it? Our beautiful world? Lands that stretched on forever. Skies one could drown in. The heartbeat of nature, silent yet strong. And amidst it all, a people. Beacons of light and life. Laughter that warmed my heart like naught else before. They are my meaning and my purpose. My love. In spite of, or perhaps because of this, I choose to believe in mankind's potential, in his ability to find a way forward. So let there be no way back. From that temptation, I sunder us. No more shall man have wings to bear him to paradise. Henceforth, he shall walk. Crazy bitch! So not only is this whole scene metaphorical, but like... Her reasoning, you know, she basically offered them nothing. 
she walked up to people who had literally created God and said, Oh, nah, man, you gotta suffer. You totally aren't capable of everything. And then, like, said, Nah, man, is capable of everything. And that's why I gotta kill his God and destroy his world and shatter his souls. And... Whew. All is excruciating pain. I breathe fire and torment. Yeah, I, don't I feel birth suffering. a world of suffering to mire and plague. You, you didn't birth anything. You reduced the world to a to a to a mire and plague. No, it's, it's hurting her, too. In one fleeting moment, lives come and go, ever moving towards the unknown. And in that fleeting moment, they cry for the answer to the question. Why, given life, are they meant to suffer, to die? As fragmented, imperfect beings, yours is a never-ending quest. A quest to find your purpose, knowing your end is assured. To find the strength to continue when all strength has left you. To find joy, even as darkness descends. And amidst deepest despair, light everlasting. She's covered in the blood of all the people she got killed. Stained black with sin. And honestly, her, like, ending lines there kind of come off more as her mind broke than, you know, words of wisdom to live by or anything. It's truly my least favorite part of Endwalker. A conjunction has begun to form. An intertwining of your time and mine. When you truly understand what is at stake, and your journey has prepared you to surmount the insurmountable, then shall I honor the promise made in another time, another age. That promise being that we'll make it to Meteon, and she'll see that our journey is far from over. Right. I, I, I don't know if I would have had as much trouble with it if they had actually showed us the real events of the Sundering, because that wasn't an actual memory. That was like the way that Vena was choosing to remember it in her own mind. That, that was all like super metaphorical gobbledygook. And, uh, I mean, it was cool, right? It's a cool scene, and if you really like her and you're not thinking too hard about this, you know, she's... Uh, virtuous woman holds up sword and says cool shit and uh, you know all that but then you actually stop to think about it she incited a civil war and destroyed her own people destroyed the entire world and reduced it from what it you know like 
from the splendor it once had, you know, the, the capability of making a god, to, uh, you know, to what it currently is, which, you know, isn't like ridiculously bad, right? But that's because we've had 12,000 years to grow out of the hole she put us into. You know, it's not because she did the right thing. So, like, yeah, it's it's pretty fucked up. Uh, and what's even worse is because she didn't lose her memories, she did all of that knowing that she was going to do it. And, like, we don't see her try any other ways. We don't see her, like, think things through or use the Echo to restore memories to, to uh, Hythlodeus and Emmett's cell. You know, she doesn't... We don't see her try anything else. She just straight up loses all of her agency as a character and, you know, commits this atrocious genocidal act. And we're part and party to it. And what's worse, it, like, you're going to see it. Our character is going to be, like, nodding and all the scions are going to fucking endorse it later. So, like, right now, when I first played through this, I was displeased. But as the story of Endwalker continued... It literally just punched me in the balls like five times in a row every time that this event gets brought up. 